Well, we're sitting in British Grove Studios in Chiswick in London, and uh, this is uh, the place where I feel privileged to come to work uh, when I do, when I've got something to record. I built it over a number of years, uh, and uh, I'm very proud of the place. It's a, it's a wonderful place to come to work. But I, only, I don't come in here to write music, I come in here to record it. This is where I recorded this album, Track Hub, which is just about to be, to come staggering into the light. And the chest It's hard to know what's going on in your head when you're writing a song. Now. Sometimes it's not until afterwards you realize what it was that attracted you to a song. Why you should find yourself writing something is one of the mysteries of it. And I must say it's one of the enjoyable mysteries, or one of the fascinating mysteries of, of the whole thing. And I've learned over the years to just to let it happen and to, um, to find out more about it as you go in quite often. Privateering came about because I sort of saw myself, that really in a sense that's how I saw the whole thing, my operation, and, and, and Tracker is a very similar sort of thing. You know, you, you're involved in tracking down a subject matter, you're involved in investigating the whole thing all the way around. And sometimes you, you're, as well, you're tracking around the world on tour. You're also tracking back in time. The question of time is much more important as, you know, as I've got older and, uh, and some of the songs will, I hope, reflect all that. One of those, you just kind of chisel it down until you've got this sort of little circular, circular melody. You know, one of the stupidest things I ever did in my life was smoking. But there was always, there was, we were smoking. We just smoked because we were young, so we were indestructible. So that, the smoking was part of it. Um, uh, laughs and jokes, and drinks and smokes, and no lights on the stairs. No lights on the stairs. Those buttons you press on the hole, and then the button would, you know, the light would stay on for 15 seconds before you had, you had time to make it to the door or make it to whichever way it would be, and then the, you'd be plunged into darkness. We were young, so young. It always broke, not that we ever cared. Not that we ever cared. Well, the holes in the wall were such a lot. Welcome to London town But when you knew to it all And you think you're hot You're not planning on hanging around Yeah, it's a shanty vibe Because of course all the guys join in And again, that's another thing They all join in singing Because they're all there If you were doing it by yourself Then that probably wouldn't have happened They wouldn't have all joined in One of the fun things about... Uh, Recording uh, with a band is that, is that you can get things that'll happen like laughs and jokes and drinks and smokes where well, obviously the song is written, I've written the song, but then when the band are in, I might get an idea and uh, people are putting their parts together and things happen. It's great when that happens. And what I love is, is both approaches to a song. So either it'll be a band thing, or it'll be just me in the studio on my own with Guy on maybe on the keyboards or Guy engineering and, uh, and just laying out a little map and then me looking at the song and wondering what I'm going to do with it. And so, uh, you know, I'm one of the lucky ones who enjoys both things. So I've got to make a call with the song, whether, whether I come in on my own and work it up that way slowly, or whether I c come in and get everybody at it. Uh, so it's wonderful to watch great players working together like that, and th to be a part of it is brilliant. In fact, a band like that would let me get away with murder, because to them the singer is always right. So if I, <laughs> if I mess up, they're fine with it. I'm the guy that wrote it. Um, 
with uh, wherever I go. Uh, I ended up doing a duet with Ruth Moody, wonderful singer and songwriter herself, but um, so Ruth was over to, to uh, sing on some songs on the album and this one I started thinking would be really good for her. Again, the song came from a remark somebody made. Uh, the song, it came from listening to a friend talking about um, how it, it didn't matter how long since he talked to a good friend. They would always just take up where they left off. It would always be great between them. They would always... And it's great to have friends like that, isn't it? There are people that you know you just take up with and again after a long time away and it's as if you've never been away. Maybe I'm bound to wander from one place to the next heaven knows why But in the wild blue yonder your star is fixed in my sky Just another man cross So far from you It's alright Boy, she can sing There's a place in my heart Though we're far apart May you always know Never how long since I saw you I keep a fleet there for me Wherever I go And then Nigel Hitchcock, amazing sax player. The record actually does connect with quite a bit of reading. Um, and that's always been the case with me really from the, pretty much the beginning is that if I'm reading something and it happens to coincide with in one way or another with something else. You know, there are songs in, in, in the past where Sailing to Philadelphia or different kinds of songs where something I've been reading just crashes into, or Telegraph Road or something like that, where just crashes into where I am. And there's a collision and there's an idea. But I've found that, that any creative act engenders other creative acts. Once I've written a song, that walks out of the house and goes down the road and starts to in influence other creative acts, create other creative acts. Yeah, when I was a kid, I, I, I had a job uh, on a Saturday afternoon at the Evening Chronicle in Newcastle as a copy boy. I got six and sixpence for um, working on a Saturday afternoon uh, in the newspaper office. In the office, there was a strange guy who was quite clearly grumpy, quite clearly too old, quite clearly more eccentric than the regular guys who worked at the office themselves. And that turned out, as I found out, as I worked there, to be the poet Basil Bunting. Um, and he fascinated me. And he was too old for the gig. He, 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 he wasn't happy in that job. Obviously, there was something else that he'd rather be doing, quite clearly. Um, I've thought about him ever since, and I started to read his stuff, of course, as the, as the years went by. I, I, and I realized that uh, time had, was working its thing on him. And, and in some ways, when you're, when you're 14 and 15, you think you're just a bit of a jack and a lad, and you know, the, the whole future is there for you. you know, the, whole, the whole world is waiting for you. And for Basil, it was a different deal. And of course, now I see the world much more from Basil's point of view. 
And really, that's about that. It's really, in a sense, it's a song about the two of us. And Basil, of course, went on to write this epic poem, Brick Flats, which got an awful lot of attention in the literary world and enabled him to leave the paper and to go for a while to America and, and enjoy um, some su literary success. And it was considered to be the greatest epic poem since um, T.S. Eliot's, you know, Wasteland. Saturday job pays six and six now. A copy boy at the Chronicle. Five cigarettes and two silver half crowns. Meeting Vince at Mark Tony's in town. Boy, do we get around. So it's just like a three, four folk song. Oh, Basil sits there on the table for subs. But not a part of the Brian Island Club. Ancient blue sweater, too old for the job. Bored out of his mind with the Collins and Bobs. I'm a jack and a lad And I'm up for the world And I've kissed the gates Another thing that, that um, comes up in my songs quite a bit is gambling and I don't know why it does, because I'm, I don't, so I, I don't know why it should do that. That's that fascinating uh, thing, and it's, and it's, again, it's a transgression of sorts, you know, which interests me. I would always be interested, though, in people who are compelled to do things, to do what they do. But I think that is one of the, the most regular elements in, in what I'm writing about. Lot of the time. You've got to be compelled to do it. It wouldn't happen if it didn't. There's a one that reminds me of, uh, of a, a dire straight sound, and that's the song Beryl, uh, which is about Beryl Bainbridge, because she was such an exceptional woman, an exceptional writer in my view. And what's quite interesting about this Booker thing was that I was fascinated by the fact that she'd never won all these years, it being put forward every single time. And I, I went through the, um, the, the book, I went on the Booker site and I started looking at all the judges, and just out of interest, and seeing what their qualifications were, if, uh, uh, if, you know, presuming that they were qualified, if you, as much as you can be for something to do with the arts. And I noticed that an enormous amount of them were educated at Oxford, and um, Beryl is a, <clears throat> was a working class Liverpool girl who didn't go to university. Um, and uh, it's just, I'm just going to leave it there. So, yeah, so Beryl is just a very simple thing. And like Sultan's of Swing in D minor, it was with Beryl. Was on another level when she got a book and medal, she was dead in her grave. After all, after all, she gave. After all, she Beryl, you know, every time they'd overlook her when they gave her a book, or she was dead in a grave. After all, she After all, she Skydiver is, is more about that period to me, you know, when I was being introduced, to, you know, as a teenager. and being introduced to all that stuff, the Beatles and everything else. Do you remember, us, uh, you know, what a day for us. So it goes, it still has that thing. I've been banned from every race course in the country. There's something about the activity. So it's got that kind of guitar approach. But uh, it, again, it's just about the artist type of guy. It was probably a, a, an, an amalgamation of a bunch of different artists. Sky. And 
I stuck my own harmonies on it when it, uh, but then I think Ruth, when she was there, she added a little bit at the end, and it's always it's really nice just to hear her voice cutting through over uh, all the others, and uh, the, you know, she just has that distinctive thing. I think she lends it something really special, but then Ruth does that when she sings. She'll do that. <laughs> River Towns is the kind of uh, song, it's a, another character song, which I, there's, there's always a danger that I'll write a character song. And uh, this is a young guy who is a mate on a tugboat on the American River System, Midwest American River System. He, you know, and uh, I just, it was just a writer that I discovered called Brees DJ Pancake, who committed suicide actually when he was a young guy. And it, it, it just struck me as being a big waste of a, 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 a talent. And I think it was the fact that the, the, the loneliness of the boy at Christmas uh, that uh, must have uh, resonated with me somehow. I do remember um, you know, I was in a band and we'd had a gig in Penzance and the far end of the country, you know, and uh, it was Christmas Day and I was hitchhiking home. And that's all I did then was hitchhike all the time. And, um, and it was snow everywhere and I got dropped off uh, halfway up the country in a, a slip road. And I go, up the top of the slip road, I'm looking all around. I can't, it's 360 degrees, there's just snow and nothing moving. And the sun's coming down on the snow and I'm standing there and I'm the only living thing. And, and I remember having a very clear idea about what I'd chosen to do, you know, with my guitar in my bag. I think uh, River Towns more, uh, more deals with the issue of loneliness and, how, you know, you realize when you read a great story like that is how much of it there is in this world. Came in three days early to meet my boat. It ain't the love for Riley, but it's keeping me afloat. It's quiet over Christmas. If you got no place to go, I got my home from River Rats, the only home I know. I found myself a flop house. And I hit the streets at nine Get some grub and drink a beer And maybe go down the line These chips will take your money So really, you're just a young guy alone at Christmas and, uh, In uh, our tugboat uh, hand on, uh, uh, And um, I suppose you've got to find something In these characters that you can identify with yeah, the lights of Taormina is is one of the songs on the album, and I was thinking I would uh, play uh, some slide guitar on it. And and the guitar that I ended up using for the song was in fact is a '64 Stratocaster, with a pretty old thing, but it, it's a lovely guitar. And I actually used this guitar on the Sailing to Philadelphia record. It, it sort of found a new lease of life on the Tracker album, really with being used as a slide because it has a good sound. I'll see if I can play over it. I mean, I'll just give you an idea of whether... Yeah. And again, you know, I wouldn't know what I was going to play. Uh, because I like to mix up improvisation with... Can't, I hardly remember what it is. Music floating in across the bay. 
and you know, it's on and on we go. It's just, it's nice when something comes back because it's like seeing an old friend again and you know, realizing it can, there's more strings to its bow. It's a nice cycle that, that I live in terms of um, having fun and because I'm lucky in the sense that it, uh, if there is a cycle of events where you write a song, you record a song and then you go and play it to people. If you enjoy the whole cycle, then it makes you a pretty lucky guy. It's not everybody enjoys the whole deal. Life gets pretty full when, you, when you're enjoying what you're doing and then unexpected things will happen as well. And if you have tours planned um, and then unexpected things happen, you have to fit them in in between. In my case, there was a, there were a couple of Bob Dylan tours that you know Bob came and was asking about whether we could do, and so I did a European tour with with Bob and then an American tour, and they were added to the tours that were on the board already to do. The tours with Bob Dylan, I hadn't expected to turn up, but they did. So that changed the recording schedule, and it'll probably change the album too, as when, you know, when I eventually got back into the studio. I'm glad that all of that happened, because I, I think that that will have informed some of the stuff on Tracker too. I'm very much into touring. Having this little shit together is a big deal. It's a big fun thing for me, and I feel very at home. It's, a, it's not something that I'll endure, it's something I enjoy very much. Getting out onto the road with, again, with some of these songs, and seeing what it does to people, and that's part of the joy of it. It's particularly nice to see the big tough guys crying. I always think that's funny when you get a big tough guy and everybody's, the family's brought him or somebody's brought him, and he's got his arms folded and it's, you know, obviously what all this is about, but, you know, and uh, at the end they're all, to it now, the only you can see the tears coming down. It's good, it's a good feeling. But the thing is, if you've energized somebody, you've been positive or you've sensitized somebody, and you've made a difference, you know, it's, the, it's a creative act that uh, you drop it in the well and the, the, the ripples go out, and you never know what's going to come back. Mm -hmm.